it's so from TBH studying and I'm here with a little bit of a stationary challenge. So if you don't know, I'm on a stationary no buy for 2021. And during that time, I've really been working through the stationary collection that I currently have and really figuring out what products I tend to use and what products I don't tend to use. So I thought it would be cool to have a little challenge where I'm only allowed to keep five items in my pencil case. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So this is actually really hard for me because I'm a maximalist. I really love having a variety of colors to use for color coding, for drawing in my bullet journal, and I just like having a variety of pens for different purposes and for different writing styles. So in the end, I really had to think about what my priorities were and as a college student, my priority is taking notes and doing homework on paper if I have to. Um, nowadays, I use my iPad a lot to take digital notes, so it was a little easier in that regard, but still my priority when I was picking up these items was thinking about what I genuinely use to take notes and what I use on a day-to-day -day basis in class. So the very first item I decided to keep was a mechanical pencil in 0.5. I chose the Muji brand specifically because it was, I believe, either $150 or $3 USD, and that's a relatively cheap price point for a good quality mechanical pencil, but any mechanical pencil in 0.5 lead would honestly do. For mechanical pencils, I prefer 0.5 lead because I find that size works the best with my handwriting style. 0.7 just makes like my handwriting look really chunky and it's harder to find 0.4 or smaller sizes of lead. I have a lot of 0.5 lead, so it's just the most convenient for me and the Muji one happened to be the cheapest one within my collection. I also feel like the Muji mechanical pencil is a little bit more durable if that makes sense like it doesn't feel very durable it's a very light pencil it's the acrylic version and it's not the metal version but because it's so light it fits really well in my hand it doesn't make my hand tired to hold it and i also find that like even if i drop it it doesn't crack or dent or have any scratches on it as easily as the metal version of the Muji mechanical pencil or other metal mechanical pencils offer. The second item I decided to keep was an eraser to go along with the mechanical pencil. I personally don't really have any preferences when it comes to erasers. I usually just prefer the white ones because I find the pink ones to be a little harder to erase with, but otherwise any old white eraser will do. The eraser that I currently have in my pencil case is a black Muji eraser, but I just have it because I'm just trying to get through the amount of erasers I have. The kind of eraser that I tend to use is the Tombow Mono Eraser because I find that it's small, it's portable, erases well, and doesn't tear the paper as easily as some of the other kinds of erasers that I've tried before. I believe it's called the Pentel? or maybe it's a Stubbler white eraser, but I find that the Tombow one is a little softer and thus doesn't tear through thinner types of paper as easily as those thicker white erasers can be. But this Muji one is fine as well and I've had no issues with it, so that would be the second item I have. The third item I would keep is a gel pen. So when it comes to pens, I debated whether or not I wanted like colored pens for color coding or if I was just gonna stick with a black pen. And quite honestly, black pens are the only kind of pen that I will regularly use up and the brand that I chose was the Zebra Sarasa pen in 0.5. The pen that I'm currently using right now is a Sharpie S gel pen in 0.38 in a Zebra Sarasa body, but I find that the two are very comparable. I just prefer the Zebra Sarasa one because refills are more readily accessible in the sizes that I prefer. The Sharpie S gel only offers refills in 0.7 from what I could find online, whereas the Zebra Sarasas have a variety of colors and sizes available for the different refills, so I just prefer the Zebra Sarasa. I also find that compared between different gel pens, my favorite has been the Zebra Sarasa ink because other inks from like the Pilot Juice pens or the Pilot G2 have been very inky, very runny, very easy to smear, and the Uniball Signos are not bad. I just find that the ink is very runny in 0.5 compared to the 0.38, and I personally prefer 0.5 over 0.38 millimeter tip sizes. So yeah, that's why I picked the Zebra Sarasa, and in a perfect world, we would have a Zebra Sarasa refill, but I'm really trying to get through this Sharpie S gel right now, so there's that. 
The fourth item I chose for my five item challenge is a Tombow Mono correction tape. So like the eraser, I wanted something that I could use to correct any mistakes that I made with my gel pen. And the brand of whiteout that I've just used very very consistently is a Tombow Mono Whiteout Tape because there's a retractable tip on the end that allows you to protect the tip in your pencil case so that it won't tear, it won't rip while it's rattling around in your pencil bag or in your backpack. It's just very reliable and something that I've used for a very long time. I will say the one downside to the Tombow Mono Correction Tape is that there's no refill available for it, unlike other models that Tombow has within their lineup or other brands of correction tape. I know that Tombow offers refills for other models, but they don't have the same kind of retractable tip that makes a Tombow Mono Correction Tape so appealing to me personally. So I just keep using the correction tape and maybe in the future when I run out of the correction tapes that I currently have, I might try out some other brands that have refills available rather than generating a lot of waste by constantly buying the same correction tape over and over again. But for now, that's the one I have and the one I'm using. So that would be my fourth item. And my fifth item would have to be a highlighter. So this took a very long time because highlighters are probably one of my favorite pieces of stationery ever because I just love how highlighters can have a range of interesting shades. You can use them to color correct your notes even after the lecture is over. And there's such a wide variety available on the market today from a ton of pastel colors to neon colors to more retro and vintage muted colors. So it was really hard deciding on which highlighter I wanted to use, but eventually I finally settled on the Uni Propus Soft Color Highlighter in the shade Purple. One thing I really like about the Uni Propus highlighters is that they have a dual ended tip to them, so there's that flat chisel tip as well as a fine tip marker like tip on the other end. So that means I can use it for a multiple array of purposes, whether that be highlighting, underlining, drawing diagrams, using it like a marker, using it to circle important things in my bullet journal. It just allows for a wide range of versatile uses. And the second reason why I choose this one is because the ink doesn't bleed through cheap paper as easily. And the color range is also a very soft, mild color. I specifically picked the shade purple because it's my favorite out of the soft color line. I personally don't enjoy the warm colors that they offer, like the pink, orange, and yellow, because I just find them to be a little too bright for me. Actually, do they have a yellow? I forgot, but the warm colors from the Uni Propus line are not necessarily my favorite. My favorites have always been the cool colors from the Uni Propus line, but the purple is just a nice, even, mild color. And compared to the Zebra Mild Liners, which is another very popular pastel highlighter, the Zebra Mild Liners are very inky and you have to sort of break them in a little bit and let them dry out until they're a suitable highlighter to use when highlighting textbooks or readings or using them on notes. If you use very thick paper or high quality paper such as Tomoe River paper or cardstock or just a heavier weight paper, you might not have the same issue with the Zebra Mild Liners or other highlighters like the Stablo Boss or the Stedler highlighters like I have. But personally, I just find those highlighters to be very inky to have higher bleed through than the Uni Propus line. And also I just think it's fun that the Uni Propus has like a cool little window that you can look through to see what you're highlighting. So that's the end to my five item challenge. This was a really hard challenge for me to pick up personally because I just have so many stationary favorites. I really wanted to include some other highlighters like the Stedler Tri Plus Tech Surfers or some colored gel pens such as the Vintage Zebra Sarasa line. But a five item challenge is a five item challenge and I had to stick to it. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you would include if you could only have five items in your pencil case and leave it down in the comments below. I'd be really interested to see what you guys would keep and what you guys wouldn't keep. So thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.